People believe these things and a slew of others, not because they have seen proof, but because they are ingenuous. They have faith. Curry Mullis. Hey there, and today I want to talk about Dancing Naked in the Minefield by Carrie Mullis. The reason why I picked this book up is because I was reading about, you know, the virus, um, and I and I found out that uh, most of the testing is done by PCR, and I then found out that this guy actually created or invented PCR, and his, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what he's famous for, and I read some of his opinions online, or I saw some videos of him talking about, like, some things that he thought about, uh, and it was kind of interesting. It made me think, well, this guy sounds like a pretty smart guy, and I'm kind of interested to see what he thinks about, or what he thinks about things and so I found this book and uh, that's why I'm reading it or that's why I read it uh, and I would say that I generally don't read biographies or autobiographies of people uh, I usually like fiction a lot better uh, but this book sort of was a special case basically it's the story of his life um, it talks about like when he was a kid I would say that Carrie is like a real scientist like he's he's like a legit scientist um, he talks about like when he was a kid and how like he was doing these like science experiments in his house he was like playing with electricity and he was making rockets and like he was doing all sorts of stuff that that probably these days kids aren't allowed to do because it's too dangerous um, but yeah he, he kind of did a lot of cool stuff um, and then he went to university um, and he went to grad school and then he became a professional scientist so like he talks about like how he invented PCR and PCR is actually like a pretty important technology and some people would say that there's like two phases of biology there's like pre-PCR time and post-PCR time polymer chain reaction he won the Nobel Prize for it um, in chemistry uh, because it was, a, it was a pretty amazing discovery PCR is basically a pretty important technology uh, that that was discovered by him or invented by him um, and one of the things that's kind of interesting is like he did this while he was working at a company and like he was talking about it to the people at the company and people were just like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like they didn't really like get it um, and they're like and so but he he did it he went about he created it he invented it and um i know i think i think he said at some point like one of his friends was like you know what maybe you should like quit your job and then like go and work on this outside of the company he describes himself as being naive um he thought that like you know he liked the company he was working for he they were treating him well and so he thought you know well he does this experiment and then they'll reward him for it um and so yeah like PCR was a huge discovery and it's i think that he got a ten thousand uh, dollar bonus from the company for creating it. Sometime later, like the patent for the discovery was sold for like $30 million or something. Um, and so yeah, like he got like $10,000 for this like discovery that he made, which literally changed the, the history of uh, science and the way that science is done. Uh, so it's kind of like a cautionary tale in that sense, because like, like he's really smart, he made this amazing discovery. And like he kind of instead of you know, maybe being wise with with his business Akuram or whatever, um, he just like kind of had faith in the people who were paying him to his salary that they would, you know, treat him fairly, that they would treat him nicely. And so like he kind of like got a little bit screwed over, I would say. But he did win the Nobel Prize and he did win the Japan Prize, which they gave him money. So that sort of helped him to survive and keep on going and thriving and whatever. Like realistically, right? Like he invented something as huge as PCR. And like right now, PCR is being used so much like, you would think that, you know, he would have gotten some money for that. Um, other things that are interesting about this guy is that, uh, so he was a scientist, uh, but he was also curious about, like, LSD. Uh, he experimented with LSD, and he experimented with other drugs. It sort of sounds like being a chemist, he was kind of able to to create chemicals, and he tested them out. Uh, and so, like, he also knew, like, he knew what was illegal, like, what compound was illegal, and so he wouldn't make that. But then, like, there, maybe there's a similar compound that wasn't illegal that was legal or wasn't illegal and then he could make that and he was like kind of experimenting around with it sounds like he was kind of curious about drugs that he was into lsd and he wasn't ashamed of it he was kind of like proud of it almost uh he's very critical of the scientific uh community or of the like popular science or like of the science i guess i think he's critical or skeptical of the scientific community and one thing is is that like when he was in university and he was in his second year of university uh he wrote this paper it was like based on it was like some astronomy theory basically and he submitted it to uh, journals and he ended up getting published in nature journal um and and that's like the most prestigious journals you know in the world uh and his second year university uh report that he wrote got published by 
by nature. Later on in his life, when he invented PCR, he wrote the article about it, and then he submitted it to Nature, and they said no. And then he submitted it to some other journals, and they said no as well. And they ended up going into, like, he, I think he says a second-rate journal, and he published his paper in a second-rate journal, and then that ended up being one of the most influential papers. That was the most influential thing he ever did in his life, and it was a hugely successful um, discovery, and it had huge effects on, like, the future of science and biology and chemistry. Like, they wouldn't publish it in Nature. His criticism, basically, was that, like, he could write about something he had no idea about. He didn't really know anything about. He read a couple, he read, like, a book or two, and then he wrote an article, and then it got published in the most prestigious scientific journal. And then later, in life when he actually did something super significant that has like this huge history of significance now like you know they wouldn't publish it and so his thing is is like they'll publish stuff that you know like that sounds cool or whatever but they don't really care necessarily about like real discoveries about real things obviously this is just like his own experience and and like there's probably lots of things about his personality that might have been a disadvantage to him getting his paper published at the time but like it's just it's just is kind of interesting an interesting idea um and other things that he's critical about um that he talks about and, and these are this is mostly why i wanted to read about this was that he, his opinion about aids and hiv he i think he i believe that he was hired to develop an aids test and so so, like he was hired to do that and so like he was he was responsible for investigating this and like a big thing he wanted to do was that he wanted to start off his 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 paper by saying that like HIV is the cause of AIDS um and and he couldn't find any research that actually proved that like there was no actual like journal scientific journal that proved the connection between the two things and when you like read his wikipedia article it says like he was a hiv aids denier and you click on the hiv aids denier and then it goes to a wikipedia article and then like it says like people who deny the connection between hiv and aids but then it's like the three references aren't scientific journals there are articles they're like things but like they're not like Koch's principles being proven but anyhow he had an opinion on hiv and aids and it was pretty it was controversial and it seems like he kind of got in a lot of trouble for that and it didn't really help him with his career uh because he was skeptical because, because and and the thing about this guy is like he is a real scientist like this is the thing is like he really investigates ideas um the way he talks about science the way he talks about how he makes discoveries about how he does things like i actually i have i have faith in him in being like an authority on the things that he talks about because of the way that i interpret his personality and his his sort of worldview and his way of understanding things uh, another thing he is skeptical of is climate change global warming he talks about the effects of the sun on the earth and the position of the earth in its orbit of the sun and like i don't i would say like they're they're not necessarily skepticism but they're these factors um that are pretty significant that that we just pretend don't exist when we talk about you know global warming or climate change i think that this was a pretty good book like it started off you could tell like it's not a prof he's not a professional author but it's good like i would say like it's good it's a good idea it's a good general sort of summary of this guy's life and i think he's a pretty significant scientific figure uh and it's also he's a controversial person because of his ideas his ideas aren't sort of these mainstream ideas that a lot of people take for granted that a lot of people believe um and yeah like his general skepticism and his general like science being a real scientist i think this is a good book um it's a it's a shorter read uh and it's a it's a biography an autobiography which isn't something that i read very much thanks for watching uh click that like and subscribe button below if you like this content and you look you want to hear more about the books that i've read let me know what you think of this guy or if you've heard of him or what you think in the comments below uh and if you have any books for me to read maybe you can suggest some i do have a big pile of books that i'm reading and so it's going to be hard for me to get to get to new books but yeah if you have any suggestions let me know uh click that like button subscribe leave a comment thanks for watching bye